All right, we're going to pray, and then we're going to turn to God's Word together. Let's pray. Father, as we open your Word this morning, we open our hearts as well. And Lord, we ask you to speak to us. We are such a varied group of people, different stages of life, different needs. But Lord, your promise is you will supply all of our needs from your riches in glory. So Lord, minister life into lives today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, now before, before we get to the, to, to the Scripture teaching, I, I just want to clear the air about something, okay? Despite what the Hallmark Channel tells you, and despite what they've got on display in Sam's Club, it's November. Okay? It's Thanksgiving month. Okay? I'm an Englishman, and I've got to tell you that, right? I mean, something's wrong with this picture. It's Thanksgiving month. You know when Christmas season starts? When Santa arrives at Macy's. Dear Lord, you lost the plot. That's why we called the teaching series for November simply thank you, a month of gratitude. And that's what we're going to do this, this month. We're going to look at different aspects of gratitude and different causes that we have got for thanksgiving. Let, let me see if any of you recognize these words. It must be getting early, clocks are running late. Paint by numbers, morning sky looks so phony. Dawn is breaking everywhere, light a candle, curse the glare. Draw the curtains, I don't care, cause it's all right. I'll get by, I'll survive. No takers. All right, dear Lord, I've got to do a lot of educating here this morning. That's the one song from the Grateful Dead that actually made the top 40 charts. <laughs> Touch of Grey. All right, now it took you by surprise because you weren't expecting the Grateful Dead to be quoted in church this morning, right? <laughs> right, that's what, it, that's what it was really. Yeah, I, I was surprised. I was looking, I was looking, they were formed in 1965. I mean, really? They last played together in 1995. So if you're somebody who really, you know, was a fan of the Grateful Dead, that was a long time ago, people. A long time ago. So this morning, I'm not talking about the Grateful Dead. I want to talk about the Grateful Living. Amen. The Grateful Living. And here's a verse to hang our thoughts on in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Here's how you ought to be living, the Scripture says. Rooted in Christ, built up in Christ, strengthened in your faith, and overflowing with thankfulness. Grounded growing, and grateful. That's not even the three points of the sermon. That's an extra for free. <laughs> Grounded, growing, and grateful. That's how God wants us to be. Grateful. Now, let's tell the truth. Life isn't always so good, is it? Sometimes life's tough. Some days are disappointing, discouraging. Some days are a struggle. I, I've got this little book I keep by my recliner. It's my gratitude journal. And every evening as I kind of unwind at the end of the day, I do my Bible reading online at 9 o'clock, and then I reflect on the day and I pull out three things that I'm thankful for. 
Now, I don't always write them in here. Oh, thanks, Ken. <laughs> Just when I thought I had all the announcements covered. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. That's good. Ken, that's really subtle. Nobody knew I forgot. That's good. <laughs> All right, the Thanksgiving baskets that many of you will have got cards about. If you didn't get one, it, then you can get a card from the front desk after service this morning. But, but those who did, next Sunday is going to be the cutoff for the baskets, all right, for the, for the food. Uh, for the food for the baskets, that is. So if you could be sure to bring that in next Sunday. We would appreciate it, and we will send you a reminder during the week because sometimes things slip our mind, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is my Thanksgiving. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I just love we've got so much going on, particularly to serve others, that some things slip our mind, or mine anyway. I just, I just love what we've got going on. I really do. So every, every evening I sit back and I, um, I'll think about three things that went well. And I don't always write them down in the book. Sometimes I do. Here's one from a couple of weeks ago, Friday. Three things. 30 minutes me time at a coffee shop. <laughs> I was grateful for that, right? That's good. Daily FaceTime with my son. I was grateful for that. We chat every day. Number three, Walmart grocery home deliveries. <laughs> what? No, but I, you know, the rest is private. Uh, but, <laughs> but really, sometimes it's good just to sit and reflect because even in the most discouraging of days, if we take the time to pause, there's things to be thankful for. And, and what I want to do this Sunday morning is I just want to point out, I, I want to take three different verses from the Scripture, and, and, and I want to outline three things that we can all be grateful for, and that I'm certainly grateful for this Sunday morning. And, and the first is this, I am grateful for my faith. I am grateful for my faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15 says, Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Thank God for the gift. God's indescribable gift is Jesus. 1 Timothy 1.15. Here's a word you can take to heart and depend on. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. I am grateful for my faith, and God originated my salvation. He, he, he initiated it, and, and, and He made it possible because God sent His Son to save sinners. It all comes from God. Romans 6.23 is a verse that many of you will be familiar with. It says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, just look at that verse for a moment with me, if you would. And look at the second part of it. The gift of God is eternal life. Whoa. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God for His unspeakable gift. What's His unspeakable gift? He sent Jesus so we could receive the gift of eternal life. I'm grateful for my faith. Really, in Romans 6, 23, you've got the gospel in one verse. Wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. There are only two possibilities for every single person who enters this world. Jesus used a couple of different kind of pictures. He said your house is either being built on a solid rock or it's being built on sand which won't stand. Jesus said you're either traveling on a broad road that leads to destruction 
or you're traveling on a narrow road that leads to eternal life. It was not, there are multitudes of ways to getting to God. It was like there's two roads through this life. One leads to destruction, one leads to eternal life. And, and let me say this, that, that is not restricting. That's very freeing. Because God makes it simple and clear for us. I, I've shared before because I, I do like ice cream. And uh, when we moved here from the UK, in the UK at the time when we moved here 32 years ago, um, the only ice cream you could get was vanilla, strawberry, or chocolate. That was it. It was all you could get. So imagine the first time I walked into Baskin Robbins. <laughs> right? I, I never knew this. When, when you're researching for Sunday teaching, you learn all kinds of things. I never knew that their 31 flavors was because they wanted you to have a different flavor every day of the month. See, you're learning so much in church today. <laughs> right? So it's like, so that was how it started. Now apparently on file, they have 14,000 flavors of ice cream. But when I came from the UK, vanilla, strawberry, or chocolate, to be faced with 31 flavors was traumatic. <laughs> what do I have? And part of me was like, just give me strawberry. God made it really simple for us. He didn't say, there's hundreds of ways to get to heaven, just choose what works for you. He said, uh, there's one way that leads to heaven. Make sure you're on that way. Make sure. He simplified things for us. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. There's no gray area. There's no room for second guessing. It's black and white. And each way of living has its predetermined outcome. Death or life. One way leads to God. The other way leads away from God. Listen, you can't get on the Sunrise Highway here, turn west, and hope you'll get to Montauk. It won't happen. You might be the nicest and the kindest person, but you won't get to Montauk. You might have Montauk stickers right across the back of your car, <laughs> but it won't get you to Montauk. You're going in the wrong direction. And let me just say this in all seriousness this morning. If you're not headed in the direction that will take you to eternal life, you've got to turn around. You need to turn around. The gift of God is eternal life. So the question is this. Have you received the gift of eternal life from God? Have you asked God for forgiveness because Christ died and paid the penalty for your sin? Have you said, God, I'm going to leave the broad way and I want to follow your way and God, I want to be on the road that leads to eternal life? That all sounds kind of a little bit heavy, I guess, in some ways. Life, death, until we realize Eternal life is the gift of God. God offers us the free gift of eternal life. I, I, I went to dictionary.com uh, to see what, what they said for gift. Trust me, I know what a gift is. But I wanted a definition, and it freaks some people out here if I say I looked in the Urban Dictionary. So I went to dictionary.com, and here's what it said. A gift is something given voluntarily without payment in return as to show favor towards someone. The gift of God, given voluntarily without looking for something in return. The truth is we could not buy eternal life. Our own goodness would never get us into heaven and Isaiah 64, verse 6, it says this, We're all sin-infected, sin-contaminated. 
Our best efforts are grease-stained rags. We can't do it. So again, the, the, scripture, makes this, the scripture makes this incredible um, statement. Ephesians 2, verse 8, by grace you've been saved through faith. And that is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no man can boast. It's by grace that we have been saved. By grace that we have been saved through faith. So grace is the means. I'm looking for something I lost. Stick with me. Oh, there it is. Salvation comes from God's grace. One of the things we tend to miss out on if we're not careful because we get a bit uptight sometimes as Christians that demons are going to find us if our kids dry, dress up for Halloween. And, and we lose total sight of the fact that, that actually there's something way more significant about that date. And that is that that was the date that Martin Luther nailed his thesis to the door of Wittenberg Cathedral, which stated that salvation was through nobody but Jesus Christ. The established church at that time said, if you pay money, you'll find forgiveness. If you pray prayers, this many prayers will get you forgiveness. Or, or, or in some extreme cases, if you go, go on a pilgrimage to here, you will get forgiveness. And Martin Luther was a sole voice who dared to stand up and say, this is wrong. Salvation is by grace. You don't pay for it. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. It is <coughs> the gift of God. Paul said, it's by grace you've been saved through faith. And then he says, even the faith you've got to trust God is the gift of God. So God not only makes the way possible, he gives you what you need to make it happen. The very faith to trust God is the gift of God. Grace is the means by which we are saved. Faith is what makes it happen. And it all comes from God. Amen. All comes from God. So... I am incredibly grateful this morning for my faith. I didn't do anything for it. I didn't do anything to deserve it. I brought nothing to the table. You know what I did? I received the gift of eternal life. And you might be here or watching us online this Sunday morning, and, and you know what? Maybe you're someone who, who loves being here, and maybe, maybe, maybe um, you know what? Being in this environment regularly has helped you to make some adjustments to life as a whole. But my question is still, which direction are you going? Which direction are you going? The gift of God for you is eternal life. But have you taken hold of that gift? Have you taken hold of it? And if you haven't, then I'm not going to wait to the end of my teaching, and this isn't the end, don't get your hopes up. But <laughs> I want to address that now and say, if this is you, and you say, you know, you haven't really clenched the deal, you haven't received from God the gift of eternal life, say, God, I receive you. As my God, my Lord, my Savior, I give my life to you. I want to encourage you to take that step. It's the step you need. I, I was looking because I was anxious because I bought, brought $50 with me this morning. And um, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'll give that $50 to whoever wants it right now. There you go. There you go. And it looked like she passed it over to Grace Care, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> girl. Because that's how our people are, June, right? <laughs> no, but you know, I could have stood here all day saying, hey, here's 50 bucks. But the person who got it is the person who said, I'm going to go get it. If you've never fully committed your life to Jesus, how about this being the moment that you say to the Lord, God, I want to know you. 
as my Savior, I give my life to you. Now, I'm going to ask you all if you just pray with me for a moment, would you? And in the quietness as we pray, let's just remind ourselves there are just two ways, two roads. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And if you this morning want to commit your life to Christ and receive the gift of eternal life. If you want to claim the gift, I'm going to invite you to pray this simple prayer with me. You don't have to pray it out loud. Pray it from your heart to God, but pray this prayer with me. God, thank you for loving me. And thank you for caring. Thank you that you sent Jesus to be my Savior. God, I pray today that you would come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, in faith I receive from you the gift of eternal life. Thank you for hearing my prayer and making me your child. Amen. 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 Amen the gift of God. And if you prayed that prayer just now and you received the gift of God that's eternal life and you gave your life to Jesus here this morning for the first time, there's, there's something I want to invite you to do. As you leave today, just go to the front desk and uh, there's a book there which we've just discovered is in short supply. But there's a little book we'd like to give you about the next steps in following Jesus. And we'd love to help you. Alternatively, you can go to our website and you can look for the link that says, I said yes. And if you look at that link, just fill in your details and we will send you a copy of that book. And uh, we just want to help you on this journey. God made it so simple. You know why? Because he loves us that much. He didn't complicate it. He wanted to make it as easy as he could make it for us to know him. It wasn't easy on his part. It cost him the life of his son. But he made it straightforward on our part. I am grateful for my faith. I hope you are too. And then, secondly... This ain't going to happen, is it? So here we go. There's another Bible verse that I just want to home in on. And, and, and what I got from that is I'm grateful for my faith. I'm grateful for my friends. Grateful for my friends. And I'm looking at a verse in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. And it says this. I have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers. I have not stopped giving thanks for you. The Apostle Paul is writing to believers in Ephesus, and, and he said, you know what? I just want you to know I am forever thankful for you. And I love the fact that when God brought me to faith, he also brought me to family. And, 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 and in the course of my life, I've lived in uh, a number of different places. I've lived in a number of different countries. But the reality is this. Wherever I've been, I've been part of a family because the family of God is worldwide. Amen. And I thank God that I'm part of something. So he brought me not only to salvation, but he brought us to his family. God has brought us together. There's, there's a story that I love to tell, and, and a lot of you will have heard this before, um, but I'm going to tell it again because it's the best one I know that illustrates the point. 1984, I went to India for the very first time. Uh, a friend of mine, Ian Green, and myself went. We did a lot of preaching, Bible school training in the southern India state of Tamil Nadu. We, we were there for a couple of weeks, and then we were flying up to Mumbai and on from Mumbai to Agra, and we were going to be uh, preaching at services in Agra over the weekend. The only thing, this is 1984, and um, things were a little simpler in India than they are now. 
development of that country has been unbelievable. In 1984, there was one flight a day from Coimbatore, the city we were in, to Mumbai. Just one flight. And it landed in Mumbai at 7 o'clock in the morning. And our flight to Agra left at 8 o'clock that evening. So we had 13 hours we were going to be in, in the domestic airport there in Mumbai. So the pastor we were with in Coimbatore said, look, I've got a friend who works at the airport. I'm going to send him a letter. Because a lot of people didn't have phones back then. I'm going to write him a letter and ask him to meet you, take you to his home and look after you for the day so you can rest and he'll get you back to the airport. So we fly up to uh, Mumbai. We arrive early in the morning. We get off the plane. We go to the baggage place. We get our luggage off and we wait and we look around and nobody's looking for two white guys. <laughs> and uh, slowly people start to leave the baggage hall until there's just Ian and I standing there. And there's a guy at a desk in the corner. He said, can I help you gentlemen? And I said, well, a man was meant to meet us here, but he hasn't shown up. And that was all we had. I had a piece of paper with his name on it. So the guy at the desk said, uh, have you got a phone number? No, he doesn't have a phone. You got his address? No, I don't have his address. He said, what have you got? I said, I've got his name. The guy looks at the name and said, I know him. He works here. <laughs> right? Now, the likelihood of that in a place the size of Mumbai, folks, is ridiculous. So he gets this guy on the phone, and then he says to us, he said he can't get away from his work for a couple of hours. He never got a letter to say you were coming. But he told me to put you in a cab and to send you over to his apartment and tell his wife that, uh, that, that I sent you, and it'll be okay. <laughs> Oh, really? Is this for real, folks? Is this is how life ought, used to be. So Ian and I get in this cab. This cab driver, you know, stops outside this apartment building, uh, and he points out the apartment. We go. We, 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 we knock on the door. This lady comes, and, and, and we do our best to explain to her that we are two pastors from the UK, and um, apparently you're going to look after us. And she opened the door and welcomed us and took us into her home and she made us tea and she made us comfortable and she looked after us for a couple of hours till her husband arrived and then we chatted with him for a bit and then he said, oh, my wife's made us a meal. So we had lunch with this family in this very simple two-roomed apartment and we had lunch with them. Then after lunch they said, you guys look tired. We were. We were exhausted. So why don't, why don't you lay down? What we hadn't realized was that these little narrow kind of chairs we were sitting on with the table in the middle was also their bed. Wow. And so they said, let's move everything, and you guys lay down here. They spent the afternoon sitting on the concrete kitchen floor while we slept in their bed, and then they got us a cab to take us back to the airport at night. Isn't that phenomenal? Isn't that incredible? Right? If two... English guys arrive at your door this afternoon, ladies. Don't let them, don't let them in. Okay? Don't let them in. But that, to me, that is just a great, it's a phenomenal illustration of the fact that when God saved us, he made us part of his family. Amen. What a wonderful thing. What an incredible thing. And I am grateful for the friends that God has given me. In Acts 4, verse 23, Peter, Peter and John had been imprisoned by the religious leaders. They'd been threatened then not to preach any more about Jesus. And, and then it says in verse 23, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all the chief priests and the elders had said to them. I, I just love that phrase. They went back to their own people. What a blessing. What a privilege to have our own people. What a wonderful thing it is come Sunday to think it's not just that I'm going to church. I'm going to see my own people. 
That's what it's really about. That's what it's... And if you're new, newish to us, uh, give it a little bit of time. It takes a little time to get connected and to get to know some folks to decide if you want to get connected. But I tell you this, in the end of the day, church has to be more than a service we attend. It needs to be a family we belong to. I am grateful for my friends. And then just jumping over then quickly to the third. I, this is why it's good to look at that app because there's a lot of stuff I'm missing out today that is in the Bible app with my notes for today. The, let, let, let me just jump over to the third thing. I am grateful for my future. I guess the band sang a song that puts it really well. We know how this story ends. We will be with you again. We know how the story ends. I am so incredibly grateful for my future. 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We know how this ends. This ends in victory. What a great thing to be able to look at the, the thing that probably is feared most, the worst scenario, and recognize there is nothing to fear because all death can do for the believer is deliver us to Jesus. That's all it does. That's all it does. It delivers us to Jesus. Psalm 23, verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We know how this story ends. Thank God. I am grateful for my future. When Ian and I flew out of Mumbai, we flew up to Agra, and um, we, we did some services there over the weekend, and then on the Monday morning, and this is why we were very happy to go to Agra. Agra is the city where there's the Taj Mahal. So on the Monday morning, we went to see the Taj Mahal. Unbelievably, breathtakingly spectacular and beautiful and I think the most glorious place I've ever had the privilege to, to visit. And, and ever since I saw it that time, and I, I did visit it again a couple of years later, I really had this idea, I'd love to take Jill and for us to go together to the Taj Mahal. And just around the time of our 40th wedding anniversary, we did. I think we got a picture of that, G, right? There they are. There we go. I was young then. <laughs> she still is, but there, there we are. That's around the time of our 40th wedding anniversary at the Taj Mahal. And uh, the arrangements for us to get from where we were um, with the church in Mumbai up to, up to Agra on that occasion and the hotel arrangements were made by a, a wonderful young lady in the church who was a travel agent, and she arranged everything and, and she said to us when we got there, she said, um, you know, I asked her, you know, I need to square up with you what it all costs. She said, well, if you could cover the flights, I want to make the hotel my gift to the two of you. We stayed in this unbelievable, the Taj Hotel, right, Jill? It was an unbelievably beautiful, spectacular hotel. It really was. Now, I don't know if they were real precious stones, but the headboard of the bed had all these different color stones in it. It was an incredible experience. We stayed there for three nights. Just luxury. Fabulous. And then on the fourth day, we flew back to Mumbai and Back to New York. It was February. We arrived about midnight. It was a feel like of negative 13 degrees. <laughs> and 
the car service we'd booked to pick us up was late coming. We're standing outside, absolutely freezing. And then we got back to our house, and the pipes had all frozen. So we couldn't take a shower, couldn't make coffee, couldn't do anything. If you're pushed, by the way, did you know you can take a shower in a bottle of water from 7-Eleven? I'll give you tips later. But the thing is this. The Taj was a high note for three days. And then it was over. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing about my future. John 14, verse 3, When everything is ready, then I will come and get you, so that you can always be with me where I am. Amen. Wow. <laughs> always be with me. Where I am. I am the grateful living. Grateful for my faith. Grateful for my friends. And grateful for my future. And whatever might be going on in your life just now that's making it complicated and causing you stress, don't lose sight of the good things you've got going for you your faith, your friends, and your future. And let's remind ourselves of that verse that I started off with in the book of Colossians. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. My encouragement to you today is let's live today overflowing with thankfulness. Amen. 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 Let's stand and pray together. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your gift of eternal life. We couldn't have earned it. We could never deserve it. But Lord, you gave yourself for us so we could be yours. Thank you, God, for the gift of your family. And thank you for the gift of a future that is absolutely settled and assured. God, help each of us, I pray, to live lives so filled with gratitude that our influence will impact others to look towards our good and gracious Father. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.